Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to the video for what is reset relative transform. Let's run through a quick little example. Not really much is going to happen here. I have a reset button. When I click it, the relative transform of this cube is being reset. What do I mean by that? Well, let's take this cube and let's tell it it's a 45 degree on the Y. We'll hit reset and now it's back down to zero. But if the actor itself was rotated, let's say 30 degrees, and then we went ahead and rotated the cube another, well, let's say negative 30. So it puts it back to square. When we hit reset, just the cube is going to reset back to the defaults. Let's look at this node. It's pretty simple. For my example, I'm creating those boxes that you saw and storing the variable. And then I'm doing a simple reset relative transform node. We type in relative transform, and we're not going to find it. Hopefully you can guess why. It's because we need a scene component for the target. So if we uncheck context sensitivity, we can find reset relative transform. Or of course we could always drag off of an actual scene component and we'll find reset relative transform. So the node, again, super simple. It only has a target of a scene component and as long as you execute it, it's going to reset it back to the default values, which is basically zero for the location, relative rotation to no rotation, so zeros, and then scales to one. Now remember, this is relative and it's targeting a scene component. If we pull up what we're using for our example and we find the boxes, this is what we're working on in terms of the uh, scene component and the resetting. We have an actor here, which is comprised of a root scene component and a few children. The cube is our target. And once we spawn it in, we are telling it to reset the cube's relative transformation. Let's pull it up. And remember, it is relative. It is relative to the parent what its values are. So while our parent may be at 0, 0, and 150, so it's a little bit off the ground, the cube itself has a value of 0, 0, and 0. It is placed at this coordinate value relative to the parent. The sphere, you can see, is a little bit off to the right, and the cylinder is a little bit off to the left. That's why they have a 200 or negative 200. My cube is pretty much in the middle. I can move that, of course. Let's make it up higher. Let's move it up another 100. There we go. Now my cube's up. Now let's go ahead and take my scene component and we're going to rotate it, let's go 45 on the Z. And now you'll see everything's rotated. Now at some point in time I may wish to reset just an individual item, but not the parent. I can hit my reset button here. you notice my cube drops back down. And it will change any rotational values or scale values. So let's, let's go ahead and do that. 2, 2, and 2. Now we have a giant cube. Reset. Boom. Back to default. It's still rotated based on the parent's rotational value of 45 on the Z, even though the cube has no additional rotation added to it because the relative values, again, are based with the parents. And that's all the node does. The node is simply going to, once I finish dragging it off on accident, it's going to simply call a reset and reset everything back again to 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 on the rotation and a scale of 1. That's it. That's going to wrap up the reset relative transform node. Remember, it takes in a scene component. So not the actual blueprint itself, but one of the children, or even the root of it technically, but an actual item that has a transform, so a scene component somewhere in it. And it's going to reset back to default values.